Now we come to the most important portion of all of these sessions about rest for God's sake. It is that time when you can be alone with the Lord to practice what you've heard of. By now, you are probably bursting with all this, all this information about rest. Some things are very familiar to you, some things perhaps are quite new. And most recently in the course, you've talked about releasing your concerns, unloading the things that may be burdening you, uh, fears, sorrows, maybe some joys, but we want you to practice, release, and then review and remember. This is what we call a briefing before you go out and meet with the Lord for three to four hours at one time by yourself. We want to emphasize some very simple techniques or thoughts to make your time more successful. Uh, and there's no guarantee, can't control you or how God appears, responds to you, but at least we want to set the stage the best we can. Your Sabbath rest experience, a briefing. You can fail at this Sabbath rest experience. Uh, I think you have to try to fail just about, but it is a silent retreat. So if you engage in conversations, if you talk on phones, you have your cell phone, we suggest you turn it off or not answer it, or maybe set it aside, put it in a different location for three hours. It's amazing that people can survive without you answering your phone. And believe it or not, you can survive. You can make it through a time when you're not answering your phone. Things will keep. Very likely there's no emergency that will happen during this time. So don't engage in conversation on phones. Don't meet another person and sit down and talk together. Don't talk on tables. Usually sit down when we talk, but sometimes on tables or don't talk on the edge of a car or on a sidewalk or any place. Don't talk on and on and on. You get the idea. This is a silent retreat in which you're to entertain the voice of God. Will he speak to you? I cannot guarantee that, but at least you're to get in a position where you can hear him in quietness and meditate on his word as he may direct. Do you have any comment about that? One of the things that I would say is that um, each one of you is uniquely created by God and you're different. And so all we're giving you is a place to start mm -hmm. as you go out and you do your own personal Sabbath retreat. God may take you in a totally different direction as you meet with him, and that's okay. Um, this has to be according to how God's wired you. Uh, it's not about us. It's about you and God meeting together. So wherever, whatever you do, it's okay. Um, this isn't what, what we've given you um, over the course of these, uh, these last lectures. It's not about us. It's about you meeting with God and you can take it in a totally different direction. It doesn't matter. So feel comfortable with, with wherever God takes you. If he takes you maybe to um, a verse or a chapter in scripture that you heard uh, last Sunday or the Sunday before last or a month ago that God wants you to meditate or contemplate, go there. Um, it doesn't matter. So I want to give you freedom to go where God takes you, and I want to give you freedom to be who you are and the way God's wired you. We don't do it exactly the same way. It looks different because we're two different people, and you're different than we are, so it's going to look different, and that is okay. And of course, uh, as a general statement, don't engage in work. And for some of us, like myself, we are workaholics. As a pastor, I found it easy at first to work on sermons. The pressure of having sermon preparation from Sunday to Sunday is always there for a pastor. And so it'd be real easy to try to make a sermon, or study the text in line for the coming Sunday. Not to do that. 
uh, don't work on your car. As I've said before, I often have my Sabbath in my car. Uh, when it's cold in the winter in particular, I can sit in my car and I can turn it on a little bit or whatever else. But in my car, you know, since it's a place that's familiar to me and I, I noticed a little dust on the uh, uh, part of the car uh, near the windshield, uh, the dash, or somewhere else, and I might take and clear the, clean the mirror and don't work on your car if that's where you are. If you're in your own home, resist cleaning your house if that's where you are. Or fixing anything that you notice is broken. Set that aside for another time. It'll take a little discipline. Uh, don't work on your appearance. Maybe there's a, near, a mirror by or you have one in your purse or your pocket and you start to look at how you look and be obsessed uh, about your looks or something. Let that be. God sees you just as you are, uh, clear through. Or you may work on your computer. I happen to use my computer to release my concerns, but it's easy to slip into some other programs or if I'm online to answer an email. Don't do that. Just use the computer if you use it during your Sabbath uh, to do those particular things that are there for you to do. Now, you can disappoint yourself regarding the Sabbath experience. Uh, one way is by expecting way too much. Uh, one person might say, this is the moment I've been waiting for, to get alone with God and I expect he's going to tell me great things. I heard someone speak about their Sabbath retreat, their Sabbath experience, and I will experience exactly what that person experienced. I am sure of it. We expect to receive the same kind of time and experience that uh, someone else has, and as Lois has indicated, we're each different people. God will come to us according to our configuration, and only God knows how you function what side of the brain works best for you. Um, so don't be afraid to expect, but beware of expecting way too much. Think of this as the first time you're doing it, or maybe the third time, or whatever it is. Think of it that you're not really good at this yet. You haven't done it before. In many cases, this is the first time for you. You're going to do this for the first time, the first in many times. And it may be the accumulation of weeks of Sabbaths before you begin to really enjoy your time in solitude with God. Uh, another statement about expecting too much from God or in this experience, God is going to tell me what, this, uh, what his precise will is for me. I've been waiting for him. I've been, had this decision for him. And now is the time he's going to tell me clearly. Uh, the clouds will open and he'll speak to me or it'll be just so obvious to me. This may or may not be the case. Open yourself up, he may tell you, but it may not be in one time. It may be a gradual period of time when you've quieted yourself before the Lord for a number of weeks and Sabbath experiences that then he gives you guidance. And God doesn't always give you the whole blueprint for your life. In fact, that's probably the exception rather than the rule, that more likely he's going to give you step by step what he wants you to do in life. And then again, expecting too much. If God doesn't show up, I give up. I've tried these things before, I'm quitting. That's expecting way too much. What do you mean by God showing up? Maybe he's come to you and you haven't noticed it and acknowledged it. So we can expect too much. Another way to fail at this experiment or experience is to expect too little, where we don't expect anything and we are already uh, forfeiting the whole experience because of past experiences or what we think. Expecting too little. A person says, these things never work for me. These I, Solitude isn't for me. I'm an active person. These kinds of things never work. So you don't have any expectation of all, at all of what God might do. Um, I've been there, done that. I tried this once and it was nothing. Or those people that do this kind of thing, I think they're a little goofy in the head, you know. I really don't believe in this kind of thing. Or solitude is such a waste of time. Nothing is ever accomplished by being alone when you're not with people and not accomplishing something. Likewise, expecting too little. I've learned not to expect anything, so I'm not disappointed. A person is discouraged. I don't expect anything good. 
so you can see where you expect too much and that might fail for you or you can expect too little. But the, the key is just show up. Just show up. Uh, remember to release your concerns. These are training wheels for you. Release your concerns. That's one training wheel, one way you may go. You have the liberty to start reviewing your life if that's where you should begin. Perhaps a certain thought, a certain word, a conviction about yourself, a certain passage, and, and you need to review your life under a given scripture verse or sermon you've heard. Or maybe you go into remembering, as my wife Lois, maybe you can tell about that. Just yesterday you... Um, in a recent Sabbath, I spent my whole time just remembering and uh, remembering um, some mission trips we'd, we've taken over the last 20 years and the people that we've gotten to know that uh, we love and, and care for and the blessing of knowing them. And um, even though I may not see them very often between now and heaven, I know that I'm going to um, be able to talk and and be with them, um, if not soon, in heaven. Anyway, remembering, that's the, mm -hmm. that's the place I spent almost my whole Sabbath um, the other day. So um, that's the way it might look for you. And I, I can't say that that's ever happened to me before, but that's mm -hmm. the way it was yesterday. And maybe you want to emphasize the training wheels again. Uh. Um, training wheels. If you don't know what that is, um, in the States, when a child begins to ride a bike, they have extra wheels so that they learn. Um, they don't fall over. So they don't fall over. Our little grandchildren have those training wheels on their bikes right now because they're learning to ride a bike. And so the release, the review, and remember, we call those training wheels a place to start. Because mm -hmm. sometimes people will say, I, how do you start? How do you do mm -hmm. something like this? Well. We're giving you a place to start. But if you don't want to start there, you don't have to. There's no right or wrong reason to this, or, or right or wrong place for this. It's where God takes you. So feel free to use the release, review, and remember, or don't use them. Another thing that might happen as, is as you start releasing, this happens to me often, something will come to my mind that I need to go over with God, that He and I need to review. And so I'll jump into review, or I might jump for a few moments into remember, and then I'll go back to release. So um, we suggest spending an hour doing release and an hour review and remember, but it may not be that way, and that's okay. And just show up. Show up before God. I often suggest that you just try to be still for 30 minutes, the first 30 minutes. If you haven't sat still for a while, see what you can do. Or see what you won't do or can't do. Try to stop everything. Rest, lie down, maybe you'll fall asleep. Maybe that shows how tired you are. But just do nothing for a little bit for 30 minutes. It often is a barometer on how uh, busy we are, how hard it is to stop. Remember the word Sabbath is the word rest, but also it's defined as cease. Just cease, put on the brakes. And it may take you a full 30 second, 30 minutes that is, to cease, to stop it, to stop going forward. And here's a beautiful verse to begin with as you start your Sabbath. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, for he's un, in control. You're not in control. I will be exalted in the earth. Just stop. Just think of showing up to be still and know God and see what happens. Then perhaps uh, he will lead you through one of the three uh, words, release, review, or remember, or maybe a different direction. Maybe you don't need training wheels. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the Kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, 
visit tvsseminary.com. So, that is your Sabbath briefing. Go now, each on your own, find a place, a quiet place, to meet with God three to four hours. And then I hope that we can gather again and we'll talk about the debriefing, what you do with, after this has taken place. And uh, so go and enjoy. Let me pray with you as you leave. Lord Jesus, you know every person here, every person watching this by way of DVD and the people in this room, and you know how you've made them. Fearfully and wonderfully, you've made them each according to their own personality and personhood. You, O oh Lord, know how to reach into their heart. You know what's disturbed there, what needs healing, what needs restoration. You know the joy that is there about to be unleashed if only you set them free. So, O oh Lord, I ask you to work in this life, this life that is before you. In Jesus' name, amen.